Hi, so today I want to show you a simple little technique that you can do at home to keep your tools sharp. It's called honing or polishing and it's a gentler process than sharpening on a whetstone and you don't need to be a sharpening expert to do it. It's a gentle method so you won't damage your tools but you can greatly improve them. It's also something that you should be doing to new tools before you use them and I'll explain why in a second but let me show you first a new tool and then a tool that has been honed or polished like I'm going to show you. So if I take these two flat chisels from the um, Japanese tool set that I showed you previously you can see if I tilt them, hold them and tilt them to the light the new one with the pale handle looks like it's made of satin where the just where the blade tilts away and it changes angle slightly there you can see it looks like satin whereas with the old one it looks like a mirror surface so this old one has been um, polished so let me explain to you why the new one looks like satin and why you need to polish it before you use it so I have some excellent drawings here so when you buy a new blade, uh, a new cutting tool, it will look like satin because it's been sharpened, so it'll be razor sharp, but there'll be lots of little micro ridges in, in the blade where it's been sharpened. So it'll be lovely and sharp to start with. You'll start cutting and it'll go blunt quite quickly. And that's simply because as you cut, you knock all those little ridges off and so it goes blunt quite quickly. By polishing it, like I'm going to show you, you take away all those little ridges and the tool becomes completely smooth and so it stays sharp for longer. As you use it, like this, this bit here with the um, old section, you will put your own little dings and ridges into it as you're cutting and this honing technique will polish those ridges away as well and keep the tool sharper for longer. So to give you an idea, I do a lot of teaching and I hone the tools after every class or every other class and we sharpen the tools on a stone maybe once or twice a year. So the, the honing process is really actually very efficient. So in order to do this, in an ideal world, what you need is a piece of leather. So here, I have my own um, honing pad here that I've made and this is a bit of an old armchair that I've chopped up. Now a belt from Oxfam or the inside of an old handbag, it doesn't have to be fancy leather, just a flat piece of leather and it's the inside of the leather that I'm using, not the, the shiny outside bit. So what I've done here is I've, I've stuck it down to a sheet of MDF to keep it flat. I don't want it to wrap around the tool, I want it to lie flat so I've stuck it there. If you are really stuck then you can improvise. So again here I've got a belt and I'm going to show you a sort of self-isolation version of polishing as we go along. So we'll go back to this one. The other thing that you need um, is stropping paste or honing paste or honing compound. It's got several names. Think of it like gritty toothpaste. This one here is made by Turmec and a tube like this it costs about eight or nine pounds and it will last you a very long time indeed. So in order to polish your tools what you need to do is you need to put a little bit of this paste at the top of your leather. So I've actually got enough on here already, but just to show you, you just put a smear of paste there. And then I'm going to have to turn this around so that I can see what I'm doing. Then I'm going to take my tool and I'm going to take that satin tool that I showed you earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into the paste at the angle of the tool. Now if you're new to this and you are a bit concerned about hitting the right spot to sharpen it's a really good idea to get yourself a permanent pen and just colour in. It's this little bit here where the tool changes angle and it's only the outside edge that you're worried about. 
This is very gentle. It's not going to raise a burr on that metal that you have to get rid of. So it's only the outside edges of the tool that you're worried about. So to go back to my flat chisel, I'll start with that because that's kind of the easy one to show you. I'm going to put it at the angle of the um, slight tilt at the end of the blade into the paste and then just pull it firmly down the lever towards me. Now, you need to do this a few times. If you've got a new tool, you'll be able to see it change from satin to mirror and you know that you're doing the right thing. If it's a tool that you've already polished and you're sharpening it again, then just have a piece of waste lino beside you and test it as you go along. So a few strokes down the leather. Don't rub it up and down because all that will happen is you'll cut into the leather. So just pulling down towards you firmly. So I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on the blade and I'm just pulling it down. So that's, that's enough for that blade. With the U-shaped gouges, again, it's just the outside of the U-shape where the blade is tilting that you're working on. And this time I'm going to work down the centre and then the two sides. Now, Mr B has some kind of clever swivel that he does when he's sharpening these. I haven't mastered that. So what I do is I just go in the middle at the tilt of the blade and down and then over to one side and back and over to the other and down. And that's how I would polish all of my U-shaped gouges. V-shaped gouges are trickier because basically with a V-shaped blade, what you've got is you've got a profile like that. And what you don't want to do is turn it into a U-shape and lose that V. So the best way of approaching sharpening the V-tool is to treat it as two flat chisels and do the sides separately. And I find it much easier to turn my a piece of leather at an angle and I treat one side flat and again don't forget you can always colour in the bit that you want to sharpen with a permanent pen if you want to make absolutely sure you're getting the blades flat so that you can get a feel of it. After a while like anything else you get a feel for the angles that you want and the amount of pressure so it's practice really. So again I'm going to put it flat and I'm going to pull it towards me. Now you're not going to do any damage with this because it's a nice soft method. So this is a good way to sort of start your sharpening experience. So that's all very well if you've got access to the Turmec paste and the leather like this that you can cut up. Now, if you're stuck inside and you can't get out, you can improvise. And we've had a little practice this morning. We have used a belt. Um, and what I, I would do normally is I would bulldog clip it to a table so that it was held nice and flat. And just to digress for a second, these are really handy in the studio. These are um, butterfly clips and I bought them off a market stall in my local market, but you can get them online. They're kind of like bulldog clips on steroids. They're quite handy things to have. So um, I'm just going to clip that to the table to hold it still. And then I have some cream cleaner. So this is SIF or JIF or uh, cream cleaner. All sorts of manufacturers ones are available. This is from Asda and shout out to Asda for their lovely staff who've been so helpful in the crisis. Um, so I'm gonna use their cream cleaner and I'm just gonna put a little bit onto my piece of leather like so. And I'm gonna go back to my tools and just do exactly the same thing. The only difference now is that it's lemon scented. So that's working really quite nicely. So if you're stuck and you have some of this stuff, that's great. The other thing um, that you can use is if you are a car buff and you have some uh, cleaner for chrome, the stuff that polishes chrome is pretty good for this too. So just using that to get your tools sharp when they're new will keep them sharper for longer, but it will also to help you to maintain the sharpness. Now, that's going to work for a long time, but eventually what's going to happen is the blade is going to curve up with all the polishing and you'll find however much you strop it, it will no longer be sharp. 
at that point you have to get onto serious sharpening with stones or whetstones and we will probably make an episode about that later but I might have to drag Mr B in front of the camera to do that because he's the expert. But thank you for watching this and I hope you'll join me again.